Welcome back to the Learn Dota series. This episode is going to be about itemization or what items to buy. Before we get started, thanks to the sponsors, Red Bull, as well as the patrons on Patreon for making this series happen. Thank you guys. In the last episode, we talked about power curves. Looking at the damage curves from heroes helped us visualize how a hero's damage changes during a fight, and we could realize that enemy disables and items affected those curves. With knowledge of how those power curves change throughout a game because of advantage or disadvantage, we want to talk about itemization in this episode to try to accelerate your curves faster than the enemies. Accelerating your power curves means being stronger than you should be in relation to the enemy team, and that's super easy to achieve if you purchase better items than your opponents. Are you guys curious about starting items to purchase? We covered this a bit in the Dota Basics items episode. You can click on the link in the description to get some early game ideas. Like we covered in the basics video, inexpensive items give much more benefit per gold cost than expensive items, but their negative is that they're slot inefficient. That's principle one of itemization. Look at your item slots as resources to spend. If you have empty item slots for long periods of time, you're probably doing something wrong because that could be a magic stick, teleport scroll, stout shield, or other cheap item. Ideally, you'll fill up your inventory with efficient items in the early game and then start building into bigger items. If you try to skip the cheap items, thinking you'll just catapult to expensive stuff first, you'll get less value until the big item is completed. That means your item buildup will be weak. For an example of weak item buildup, if I'm rushing a Battle Fairy to gain cleave when attacking so that I can farm rapidly, I'd purchase Quelling first, then Ring of Health, then Void Stone, and now I'm sitting on about 2000 gold of items that just give me a little damage and HP MP regen. That's pretty weak benefit right now, because I can mimic that regen with very cheap, efficient items like Tangos, Salves, and Clarity Potions. The next item purchase costs 2200 gold for a Demon Edge, so while you're saving up for the Demon Edge, all of the gold sitting in your bank isn't making your hero stronger. In a power curve sense, the advantage of having that gold is nothing until you buy the next item. That's because in that long period of farming, your enemies can pressure you. You won't have bonus damage, you won't have extra stats from cost-efficient items, and you won't have the ultra benefit from a boot upgrade like Phase or Treads. So while rushing a fast farming item like Battle Fairy means that you get up to cleave farming faster, you won't feel as comfortable to try for a kill, push a tower, or dominate the game while collecting gold for that Battle Fairy. Depending on the skill level of the match you're in, it might be better to buy a few early items that help you smooth over the early game and then save up for a big farming item like Battle Fury or Radiance. Principle 2 of itemization is purchasing items that benefit your hero in the best way possible. If Crystal Maiden is offered free damage, would she say no? Of course not, damage is useful on all heroes, but in Dota we pay for our items and gold spent on damage is gold not spent on other benefits, so let's figure out just how useful damage is. In late game scenarios, Crystal Maiden doesn't spend that much time right clicking enemy heroes. Instead, she often casts spells, then continues moving her hero to reposition for safety reasons, either hiding in trees or running away. Yeah, later on she might be attacking creeps to push a wave out, but does that small moment of advantage justify spending gold on damage? It doesn't. But it's not as simple as one factor like damage. Almost all items in Dota 2 have multiple benefits that should be considered when making purchases. Let's say Crystal Maiden is considering a purchase of Orchid of Malevolence. It gives a large mix of stats and benefits, but the raw stats give 25 intelligence, 30 attack speed, 30 damage, and 5.5 mana regeneration. We can argue that gold spent buying 30 attack speed and 30 damage is partially wasted. 25 intelligence is nice, even though that's partly a damage increase, and the mana regen is beneficial, but if 40% of the cost of the item goes towards attack speed and damage, it's probably better to purchase an item that fits what Crystal Maiden needs by around 90% value instead of the 60% that Orchid would provide. Here's another example, say you're looking at purchasing an Eye of Scotty on Troll Warlord. It gives you 25 strength, 25 agility, 25 intelligence, and also an extra 225 health and 250 mana. It also changes your attacks by applying slows to enemy units and heroes for a few seconds. Compared to other items of its cost, the damage Scotty gives is pretty crappy, but the utility and raw stats provide a nice health barrier. One part of Scotty that's a bit of waste on Troll is the amount of intelligence and mana gained. He can't cast spells very fast at all, so we can argue that Scotty as an item purchase has some waste in it. It's still worth it for Troll to purchase Scotty because the other benefits are so good, but in some games, that lost value might convince you to purchase something else. When you're thinking about trying a new item, you have to first realize what it provides. I find that it helps to simplify item benefits into three categories. Damage, defense, and mobility. Look familiar? That's because it's the holy trifecta. Every item you purchased has some or all aspects within one of these three columns. In the damage category, this could mean damage, attack speed, amplifiers of your current damage, like by reducing enemy armor, 
It could be cooldown reduction to cast spells more often in a fight, and mana. In case the last one confused you, having more mana means you can cast more spells in a fight and probably do more damage. Defense means ways to protect yourself and elongate your life. This could be items that give you more health or increased resistance, like more armor or magic resistance. It could also mean sustain items like HP regen or lifesteal that help you heal up after taking damage and thus elongating your life. Mobility is the last pillar and this could mean items that increase movement speed or lower enemy movement speed. Mobility can also come from a range advantage with increased attack range or increased cast range so that you can affect your opponent without being in danger. The most well-known mobility items are Force Staff and Blink Dagger that let you rapidly reposition your hero to get out of danger or initiate instantly. Many benefits of items could fit into two or more categories, but usually in situational circumstances. Force Staff isn't usually seen as a damage item, but it can be used to push enemies closer to your team or on an enemy when they're ruptured to deal further damage. You just have to find opportunities to use items in new and creative ways and realize when it's a good game to execute these ideas. So how do you make the right choice on items? How do you know what to buy? When we talked about damage curves in the last episode, one of the points we made was about increasing your health so that your enemies can't kill you in their initial burst of damage. This is usually the first thing to be worried about in your first few item purchases. It can be solved in a variety of ways like having enough sustain through regen to keep your health full, or by purchasing value items like magic wand, power treads, or bracer that give you health. Once you feel comfortable on your health levels, as in you believe you can defend yourself from enemies in normal fights, then you can start spending your money in other ways. This could be more damage if you're a carry. Or maybe your hero already has plenty of damage built into your skills and enough mobility, so all you need is more defense. Bristleback is an example of this. Staying alive longer means dealing more damage, so Bristle will spend most of his games spending money on defense to continue to scale his power curve in the way that suits his hero and his skills. To know what these heroes need from their items, it helps to know what their strengths are. Earthshaker's ultimate does much more damage if a lot of enemies are nearby. If this team is grouped up and pushing a tower, and they see Earthshaker walking up, they're gonna murder Earthshaker. If he has a blink instead, and blinks from trees to cast his ultimate combo, it's much harder to prevent that, and the Earthshaker's value as a hero suddenly shoots through the roof. Earthshaker is a more obvious example because of his ultimate, but most heroes have more nuance. For Troll, he gains attack speed with every attack from his passive fervor. His first skill turns him into a fast-moving, high-armor melee hero that has a small chance to root enemies on hit. His ultimate increases his attack and movement speed by a lot. Everything about Troll screams, purchase items that make my attacks better, because every one of his skills already make his attacks better. The best way to get huge damage output is a mix of attack speed and damage items, so Troll can spend more heavily on damage than attack speed and get to large damage more quickly. For carry heroes or heroes like Troll, some items have more synergy with certain heroes because of the way they interact with their skills. You might have wondered why Scotty is good on Troll despite giving him too much mana. It's because Troll lacks disable outside of his weak slow from his second skill and his low chance to root. If enemies stun Troll and run away, he might not be able to catch up and keep hitting, hoping for a root. But if he has Scotty, then he can slow enemies upon attack, making it so they can't run away as fast. That means he picks up fervor charges more quickly, and higher attack speed eventually leads to bashes and more attacking. Want to know an even better Scotty carrier? It's Medusa. She doesn't care as much about the slow that Scotty provides as Troll does, though it is useful. But Medusa players love Scotty because of the way Medusa's mana shield works. Mana shield blocks a large percentage of damage taken before reduction is applied in exchange for her mana. So to kill Medusa, you have to drain her health and mana. And because Scotty provides a stupid amount of mana pool to heroes, that means Scotty is by far the best tank item that Medusa can purchase, while still being a decent damage item. Another look at a skill that gives us a good idea about complementary items is Arcane Orb. It modifies Outworld Devourer's attack with bonus pure damage based on a percentage of his current mana pool. That means increasing his mana pool increases the pure damage he deals. So for OD, items that provide intelligence give him extra benefit as an intelligence hero. Int items not only increase his physical damage by one, but they also increase his mana pool, and thus the pure damage of his attacks. Some build ideas are a bit harder to grasp, but hopefully this laid a good foundation. I personally love theory crafting because I like channeling creativity in trying new builds on heroes and trying to find a solution that few have thought of before, like building a veil on any hero who deals magic damage. However, the easiest way to know what items to build is to mimic item builds from players much better than you. Just keep in mind that they also adapt their builds and change their minds multiple times in a game, and you can too. 
That's because every game is dynamic and changing. Everyone's power curves change throughout the game. When you encounter problems in-game that seem too strong to play against, you have to look for a solution. If you're having trouble killing a Storm Spirit, your team needs Disable that prevents his escape. Maybe you just had a team fight where you thought your team was winning, but all of a sudden the enemy carry has a butterfly you didn't expect, so now you need to pivot towards Monkey King Bar so you have better accuracy against his evasion. Changing plans like this is going to happen often, or at the very least you're going to doubt your item decisions, but hopefully after a team fight that you lose, and realizing I really should have bought Black King Bar, that you'll change your habits and adjust for that in the future, unlike myself. But that's it for the itemization episode, thank you guys for tuning in, I appreciate it, and make sure you check out the next one. Thanks for watching!